All right, so I'm back for another fun day of renovations. Uh, and I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm super excited for this one. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I, I say I'm excited. Sometimes I say they're fun, but they're not, they're not always fun for me. But today is going to be great uh, because today we got a few things to do and then we're going to be at the point where we can start putting the bathroom back together. So that's exciting, right? To go from breaking it down and demolition and then uh, getting it back to the point where you're putting stuff back in and you're seeing it kind of build back up again. And, and uh, total uh, elapsed time as far as like me working here has been about, this, is, this would be day three. So it probably seems a lot longer because I only do one video a week. Uh, but for me mentally, right, it's been a long time. It's been a long time coming uh, up to this point. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, really appreciate you joining me today. As a reminder, if you like these videos, uh, please like and subscribe and we're gonna get going. All right, so to start us off today, we're gonna focus on removing this, this toilet flange, which means cutting the main sewer line down here in the bathroom because we're gonna replace a, a full section of that eventually. For today, we're just gonna cap it off. Uh, that should also cover us uh, on this drain line here and the drain line for the tub. Or those are connected up uh, hopefully at a point prior uh, to where we're gonna cut it off and cap it. So we won't have to really worry about those today. We're also gonna tackle the water lines coming up. So there's uh, five in here. We're gonna cap those off uh, just, just for now. Uh, eventually we're gonna redo some of the plumbing in the basement and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do them up a little bit differently. All right, so I'm down in the basement now right under where that flange uh, connects up through the floor. Uh, so my plan is to cut, so you can kind of see the drain lines run and connect here. My plan is to cut here uh, so that I can start removing pieces of this. Uh, I may, depending on how it goes, cut all the way back to here as well. Uh, but the weight of the pipe, I don't know what that's going to be. It's going to be heavy. Uh, I want to make sure that each length is supported. I am not 100% sure what I'm going to do here uh, because I need to get that flange down through the floor, and I, I have no idea how that connects. I've never removed one before, so uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> that went a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, I didn't even get any any poop on me, which is which is you know, you know I, we're at that point now where that's that's a good day. That's a good day. So I'll take that. Um, the pipe came off actually pretty easy. It ate through a whole battery just doing those three cuts. So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but what was kind of funny at the end, uh, I wasn't expect I was expecting a slog as I try to get kind of the angle between you know where I was standing and where it went up vertically through the floor but it was like it was like 12 inches of this really soft lead which I've never encountered before uh, which you know ideally I wouldn't be cutting into a lead pipe uh, but at the same time you know respirator up and everything and uh, it made it super easy so I'll take it all right so up next uh, we're going to start mapping out the water lines a little bit down here uh, I think there are some that don't have shutoffs except for the fixtures. Uh, so we're going to cut those and cap those for now so that we can ensure water continues to run to the upstairs apartment while we're working down here and while we're working on the downstairs apartment. All right, so to start us off here today, uh, these are this is the hot water line going up to the shower. And uh, this runs over from the water heater. Uh, so we're just going to cut this right here after. There we go. And it looks like hopefully that valve is working. Uh, likewise, this is the cold water. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, this one has a valve as well. So I'm just going to get in my hand here and I'm just going to cut that real quick behind that so I know I can take that out from above. All right, so the toilet line is one of those tricky ones because uh, there's no valve all the way back. If you look back here, going all the way back to the main water line, which is right here. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to uh, cut this, cap it, 
And then uh, when we're going to reaffix it, either there'll be a completely separate water line or we'll just cut it again, uh, put a PEX adapter on there and just run it up through. There's no place I can't stand without hitting my head. So there are certain things that make jobs so much easier. And this is a, uh, an automatically, it, it's not expanding, but an automatically compressing pipe cutter. Uh, I think this is a, yeah, this is a rigid one. And I think this was like 27 bucks versus the, I think. <laughs> To move you back. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I should probably relieve pressure on that main, huh? Because it was pressurized. So we'll give that a hand. I'm not spraying all over me. <laughs> yeah, like I was saying, there's there's few things that you know just make your lives easier, and this is one of them. Definitely one of them, uh, because as you twist it, it compresses and you don't have to turn the knob, do it all over again. So definitely thankful for this guy here. And I think uh, just to make my life easier, because I might have to cut it up there anyway, I'm gonna cut the top part as well so that I can pull it up through the floor without having to screw around too much. I actually don't think that's what I think it is, but. All right, uh, after trying, I got a slight change of plan on this one. Uh, so this one looks like it's plated brass or I don't know either way not copper um, and it's a different size than I would expect so I think it's threaded so we're just gonna get in there all right so this one's all ready to go we're gonna cap that um, and then we'll cut it later. Um, and looking at this, it's not gonna be as simple as just cutting this because uh, I looked back here and what I see is that for this hot water line, this actually runs up here to the main half inch that's coming over for the hot water. I'll, I'll probably just cut this here and then cap it off here because it's easiest access uh, to solder. And then eventually uh, this whole line, you can kind of see it running down this way, that whole line I'm gonna replace uh, going all the way back to the tank. be honest I came fully prepared to solder on some of these fittings today and after kind of working through that way it turned out and because of where I cut the lines I've only got two that I need to deal with and the nice thing about that is that I've taken shark bites off where I've used them as temporary fixes but I've got two in my uh in my box right now so i'm just going to clean these up sand them down just a little bit so they don't mess with the o-rings and i'm just going to use those shark bites because that saves me a bunch of time and i don't have to worry so much about getting all this lovely water out of the line as you can kind of see me doing now there's a bit <laughs> there's a bit of it all right that bad boy in that's it you do the same thing this guy over here technically I don't even think you need to do any of this with shark bites but I want to reuse them so I'm gonna do what I can to get rid of any sharp spots or burrs or anything like that all right uh, here we go about the shark bites you always got to make sure they're really well seated uh, otherwise they'll cause you problems all right just doing a quick double check here i have the main line here on the left coming down through oh now you can see this over here 
That's why it was such a pain in the butt to get through that hub. There's about, I don't know, an inch of cast iron there <laughs> where, where it uh, matched back up. But anyway, um, with that line capped off, got that line capped off over there. I'm going to turn the water back on and see how we do. Coming on. All right. It's on mostly. I don't hear anything coming through the drain lines. Nothing appears to be leaking down here. Just gonna take a quick check here. This is gonna put a little water on the floor. Or it should. Yep, 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 yep. No, that's fine, that's working fine. <laughs> that went a lot better than I expected. Uh, the cast iron pipe cut fine. Uh, everything else, right, was pretty relatively easy to, uh, to to take out. I didn't even have to solder anything. I, I there's only two, I, I came prepared with seven solder stops, uh, so I could I could cap all of these lines off. But you know the way I ended up cutting it uh, in the end, I didn't show all of it. Uh, but the way I ended up cutting it, there's really only two, which is which is pretty exciting. So I, I've still got a ton to do down here. Uh, the good news is I just don't have to tackle it right now. Uh, my goal for today was to get uh, everything that was running from the basement up into that bathroom uh, cut out uh, so that I could start laying down the subfloor and I just wouldn't have to deal with working around it and all that because I was going to replace it anyway. In future videos, once we get that bathroom kind of put back together, uh, we're going to start working on uh, things like this, right? We got to replace this trap. Um, we got to replace or at least uh, tie into uh, what exists down here for this main uh, main line. And then one of the other things we're actually going to do here is replace or cut out uh, basically all of this all the way down to that uh, hub down there. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, but that's for a future future me. We're not going to deal with that right now uh, because one, I don't have the stuff to do that and I don't want to. One thing you may have noticed is that it's a lot brighter in here. Uh, so normally when I'm working in this bathroom or I'm working down, that's even worse down in the basement, I'm working in the dark. I invested <laughs> in something and I, this isn't something I would normally prioritize uh, because I, you know, I've got a little light. I've got this guy right here, uh, which I've had for a long time. But what it did is I went to Harbor Freight and I bought this crazy 4,500 lumen light, which just you know, just lights up this whole bathroom, lit up the whole downstairs. And I'm pretty excited because one of the things that I, I find frustrating is not having enough light, but it's also one of those things that I was never really willing to do anything about. <laughs> and then I, I, I bought that light and it was like 80 bucks, right? So it's expensive, uh, but it's, you know, it's definitely not a splurge, right? It's not a top of the line sort of thing. Uh, and it's already changed everything about how I, how I do things. It's so much more pleasant to work. So great purchase. So I just pulled down the shower line. Uh, this was sitting here. That was just shark bit in there. Uh, this wasn't screwed down at all. Uh, and this didn't have any dog ears on it. So this was just kind of flopping around. So <laughs> not the best, best sort of setup, but we'll uh, replace that and uh, make that be a lot more secure. All right, so what I'm doing here is I am securing down the subfloor. We're gonna be going over top of this and we wanna make sure that everything is in as good a shape as it can be and is reasonably level. These boards are all very old. And there's lots of nails popping out of them, so we're gonna do our best. All right, so I discovered one thing that I have to go back downstairs to fix. Uh, right under here is a gap, and it goes all the way over to this corner here. Uh, so there's nothing supporting this board here, which is one of the reasons why it's uh, why it's bumped up like that. And if I don't fix that, I'm even if I put down the plywood subfloor, I'm pretty confident I'm going to have issues with uh, rocking of the toilet and, and what have you. So we're going to go downstairs, and we're going to see if we can fix that, although I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do it right now. <laughs> All right, so that's a bit of a mess, uh, by no means perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. The lip here is not as severe as it was, and I'm gonna go over this with uh, probably half inch uh, plywood, 
and uh, we shouldn't notice any difference. What I was concerned with was making sure that this was fairly even and at least stable. So I put a piece here underneath that will uh, make that more rigid because it was quite the span without the subfloor. Uh, and then I took a piece here and used that to kind of pull that board down and, and loaded that up with screws. So uh, good enough. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I'm probably gonna spend another hour or so just kind of puttering around, probably doing some cleanup. Uh, but all my batteries are low, my tripod broke. <laughs> when things start going downhill, they, they, they go downhill quick. Uh, so thanks again for tuning in. Uh, just a reminder, if you like this content, uh, please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.